Yo guys, it's Kyle coming at you from Baines Film Reviews. I am sitting down today with Eric Dweiten. I'm hoping that I just pronounced your name correctly, even though I just asked you about 30 seconds ago. Um, he is the uh, writer and director of the short film Night Ride, which is a, a very funny, a very dramatic short film. Um, and I was very lucky enough to have the chance to watch it recently. And once again, Eric is sitting down with me today and I have a couple questions for him and we'll chat for a little while. Thank you so much for, for taking the time out to sit with me and talk about your film. Well, thank you. It's great. Yes, thank you. You're very, very welcome. Um, so I, I'm always curious how everyone gets into film in the first place. How did you, how did you just get into the industry in the, in the first place? Ah, I got in a bit late because I, I started off as an actor um, in the 90s and I worked uh, in a theater actually for uh, or in the theater business for 15 years as an actor. And, and then I gradually started to write and I wrote uh, some uh, stage plays. Um, and then about 10 years ago, I... I um, I started writing for film and, and so it's about 10 years I since I uh, made my first short film and um, yeah, and then it just continued. Very good, very good. Better late than never, as they say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then where did the idea for Night Ride come from? Okay, so it it's um, the first, idea came from um, something that uh, a friend of mine had experienced because uh, he um, he was uh, actually in the 80s he 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 did what the main character does in this film he took off with uh, <laughs> with the tram and also oh and, wow <laughs> yeah yeah it's, that was and, and he actually he picked up passengers as well so that was kind of a um, uh, so so it it did happen but it but it was a you know a very different story because i i wanted to make uh i wanted to combine it with uh with the, the social uh theme in the in the film but it was a good mm -hmm. it was a good uh uh place to to um because it, it like on a tram it would be an isolated universe where you have somebody that that has the responsibility but as in as in um night ride this this uh, person doesn't really want to take uh, responsibility it just wants to kind of shy away yeah. from that so 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 it was a nice um nice arena i think to uh to to have to tell that story in Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's hilarious that that ac actually happened because it's, it it's one yeah. of the it's it's one of those things when you see in a film and you go, there's where how could they possibly come up with this idea? Because there's no way that this could happen in real life. And <laughs> and it did. So that makes it that makes it better. That makes that scenario better, knowing that it actually happened in real life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and then um, so you talked about the social aspect of it briefly. Um, Obviously, so I say it all the time in my reviews, and um, I don't want to. I hate saying it so much, but I keep repeating myself. And, but I'm, I'm going to keep saying it because I think it's important. Um, diversity is becoming more and more important in film, more yeah. so than it's ever been. And mm -hmm. part of the so that that's great, but then there's an issue that comes with that where it's being forced into films in places that it doesn't belong and it feels unnatural. Mm -hmm. um, so, did you make a conscious decision to cast the way you did? Or was did you feel that there was some wiggle room with that? No, it was it was up for a debate, you know, because because it you know the main character, as I said, doesn't want to you know engage in in the mm. situation and and and, and uh, social you know uh, harassment can be for for so many reasons in so many ways. Uh, and and we were we were uh, like de debating. I was debating with uh, with um, my producer and a couple of other you know um, uh, people involved. That that so so what is 
where where do you want to where do we really want to go with it? Uh, yeah. Is it you know um, uh, sexual orientation or you know identity uh, minority? Is it is it about racism? What is it yeah. about? And and um, and as uh, as my producer uh, is. Um, uh, you know, an active member of the LBGT community in, in uh, her, she actually made the first um, uh, film about that topic in a short film in, in Norway. And, oh, wow. and so, she, so she wanted, she encouraged me to, to go, go that way. And, and I thought that was a good idea because then, then we could make a story about this and, and, um, you know, it's uh, it's mm. it's needed. Um, like Scandinavia is pretty tolerant, uh, uh, but but not not totally to tolerant. There still sure. is, you know, that we had a terrorist attack uh, just a month ago, oh, uh, wow. with uh, yeah two casualties in in Oslo. It was it was uh, and and this film has has you know been uh, in in um, uh, a film festival in Russia, St. Petersburg, that had to close down because because there had been attacks on you know the sure. on the festival, the, the authorities, you know, uh, just a mob tried to close this down because it was a, a festival uh, for um, um, you know uh, for these kind of films. So 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 I think it's. Um, um so 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 we wanted to actually uh have a statement about that but but the way it came to us wasn't wasn't uh it wasn't the first thing i thought about actually it wasn't because you know you have a have some <laughs> yeah, social issues you want to you want to uh, sure, address sure. and 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 this is just one of them yeah definitely um and i think like I said, sometimes they these things are forced into film in a way that it feels unnatural, and it's not that it's unwelcome, but it just doesn't feel like it should be there. I mm. I didn't feel that at all with this. It felt very natural. It felt like I asked that specific question because it didn't feel like you went out and you well, this is exactly how it has to be. Like you said, you want to make a statement, but you knew that there was some wiggle room. You knew that you could play with it a little bit because you wanted to make sure that it works appropriately. And I think that I think it did. Yeah, well, well, thanks for saying that. And I was that was also the the intention was was that this this was um, it, you know it was a point from from the point of view for for from uh, another person you know so it's it it was that 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 didn't uh, belong to the LD, LGBT community. So mm. so the perspe perspective was. You know, you could do this in many ways, and and there was also the 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 lightness uh, of of it that I felt. You know, you can go quite uh, uh, far down, which it would would be cool. You know, to or 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 good to to do like to to go into the darkness. It's yeah. it it's pretty dark, but it but it has a it has a kind of a. a yeah gently romantic uh, yes. ending which which, uh, which 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 lifts up the spirit a bit uh, i feel yeah for sure and i, I was curious because it, it kind of plays with the lines between comedy and drama i don't know yeah. if it doesn't ever commit to one or the other um why why did you decide not to commit one way or the other why did you want to blend those two genres well that's that's kind of uh, the way i write and it's it's um, it's something that it just comes naturally because it, it, in the end it, there has to be a, a conscious decision about it because you know mm -hmm. people will ask what what kind of genre is this and 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 what do you want to you know convey with with this, but but there is um, uh, to be honest it's it's quite rough to you know even with a short film you you work with it for a long time mm -hmm. and and it could be quite depressing if it if it's uh, if it's you know solely um 
uh, you know, in a serious fashion, which is good. I, I love people that, 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 that want to make those kind of films and I think mm -hmm. they're really needed, but I'm, yeah. not, I'm not so good at that. I, 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 <laughs> I see the humor and uh, absurdity of life and I, I want to include that uh, in, in the films I make. Okay, because because I mean, even in like those the darkest moments on on the tram car, um, seeing uh, seeing Ebba react to it, and again, like you said, not wanting to take responsibility for these things, and she's found herself in a place where she sort of needs to. Just her reaction to this to the situation is very funny. So mm -hmm. there's this great juxtaposition of of dark and light at all times, and I think it plays very well with, with one you. another. Of course, mm -hmm. of course. And then um, in terms of, of casting Sigrid, if I'm saying her name correctly, yeah, um, yeah. Ha how, did, how did that come to be? I mean, I I'm assuming you went through auditions and things like that, but what was it like finding her specifically? And um, was there any change in the writing as a result of casting her? There was, um, because originally we, we uh, uh, didn't have any... Uh, we, it it was a female uh, lead character, but it wasn't uh, a little person. I think it's called in in uh, uh, US. It, so it's it's often changing, which is why I tried really hard not to say anything at all because I wasn't I didn't want to be insensitive. So I yeah, oh. it, it's constant it's constantly changing. So okay, well yeah, I'll, I'll say it uh, because <laughs> it's not my no, language. That's, no, that's so, my... <laughs> so 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 the 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 thing is, uh, but. Um, uh, we were auditioning and it was open and we went to Trondheim where this 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 film is is made in a um, in not my hometown but in a uh, town but about uh, like 500 k's north of Oslo um, and um, so it was just an open audition uh, there were about uh, 10 12 uh, actors that came that day and uh, Sigri was one of them and I was really impressed and mm. she she is a good actor she's 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 done she's worked for a long time uh in theater and now she's getting more and more uh uh roles in in uh, tv series and and oh, films great. which I'm I'm really happy uh with and and so she, so she was just uh, uh, the natural um easy to to pick her um mm -hmm. uh, and it and that i have to say it it gave the film an extra dimension that i i felt uh i agree uh, was good because that because then it was building on the, the diversity theme uh which is which was good for the film um and, yeah uh, and then the and then we we um we just we we were casting only in Trondheim, or or not not only we actually did some casting in in Oslo as well. But but okay. I wanted to 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 uh, to work with the local people of Trondheim, you know, because oh, it was cool. it was it was nice to to have uh, uh, for for Norwegians that is very much uh, a, a film about that region. You know, you would you would uh, yeah. identify that as as a as a, a film about this region. Right? Okay. And then I, I agree. I think that adds a dimension to the film. I think it allows those two characters to uh, possess a, a sense of empathy throughout for one another that had you not casted Sigrid, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it would have existed on the same level. Um, no, that's true. It's true. But 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 then again, you know, this is this is what happens. Uh, um, during writing when you when yeah. you come up with it builds on and and you see things like originally also the 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 main character was a was a man you know when i started writing uh and uh, you know i i kind of uh saw my friend more or less like a, a character like um yeah in in and and but then this is the things that are are good to do um, in a creative process. Is just asking questions. But does it have to be a man? What what would happen if it was a woman? What would happen? Would it? And 
and you know life throws a lot of suggestions at you and it's great that's a yeah. that's a part of the the journey well that that's great that it worked out that way um mm. i i i can't i'm not incredibly creative so it's difficult for me to picture someone else in that role but i think that this i think that this was knowing what i know probably the best choice well well, well that is that is the thing that um that happens and um and uh, i'm I'm very flexible in in that process, you know, because I I see all like in in a way when when I when I work on an idea, it's it's always moving, it's always moving, uh, and it's like f fluid. It, and yeah. and I, I I have to I have to take every new impulse serious and see if it really gives something to the story. And and sometimes it it does, sometimes it doesn't. But mm. but then then also uh, adjusting you know according to to uh, to you know gender uh, and 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 when it comes to to the actors coming they bring in some new inspiration some new ideas some new perspectives that mm. that I have to that I'm I'm very glad to take in because I I feel you know most actors I know are are, are very creative. And bring something to the to the process. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Um, and then, so the film is it's dark, it's wet, it's cold. Mm -hmm. I imagine that uh, you ran into some issues or some struggles as a result of that. What's what's filming in a situation like that like? Yeah, that you know, we were lucky that that it it is a you know it's a um, a story that takes place uh, during christmas and uh, and having snow during christmas is a good thing um so and we wouldn't get that in oslo at that time because because it, there wasn't you know sometimes there's snow here some other times there, there's not so, and and we were uh, wondering what we would get in Trondheim, and we were lucky we got the snow there because that that mm. get, gives a um, you know a, a feeling to it. But but of course it you know you can't have snow for five days. We were in in <laughs> um, so so we were lucky to get uh, the the snow on the first day when we were in ex like a lot of exterior, and and some of it was came in in uh, VFX post-production um, but um, yeah it's it, it worked out well I, I have to say with you know and also the the last film I I'm a uh, short film I, I shot here in Oslo now really lucky about you know because there's a lot of things that um, when you're in filming on a tram that is actually mm -hmm. on there's just one track on this this uh, this whole route. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one track, and and we had to shoot during the also you know during uh, uh, the time where where there were other uh, trams you know in traffic. Yeah. And so it's logistically it's like wow how how can we make this work you know without uh, and and Sigri has has to drive <laughs> you know <laughs> we, we can't really. We, we we can kind of uh, and she did really well like in the beginning we were like how, how because you, she didn't have many hours you know in um, in pre production where she, she she could learn so she learned you know to drive why will why we, why we were shooting <laughs> and and she did really well and we were we were driving it with there was lots of traffic uh, in Trondheim and and everything worked really well and when when so many things um can you know go wrong uh, or can give us uh uh difficulties it 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 went really well thank you that was that was i was very blessed <laughs> yeah. um and then back to the snow so like like we talked about the juxtaposition in the tone and the juxtaposition in the characters and things like that um i think that snow creates a juxtaposition in tone as well because I mean it's very serene and it's calming but at least here in the United States when we get snow we hate it we hate having to drive in it and shovel it and do everything else to it um 
So again, it sort of created that that juxtapositional tone for me as well. So I think that worked out in your favor also having having that snow. Yeah, also the time of day was was, you know, being able to film uh, all this uh, in in dark, which is gives it brings brings the darkness into the you know the story mm -hmm. but also the light uh which is like the more the magic of 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 the story which is yeah uh, um so so it, it was a perfect location perfect time uh to uh to film this and you know i as as far as i can see it was perfect uh, actors also to yeah to yeah film. and that that darkness sort of uh gives you the sense of isolation um mm -hmm. while there's obviously multiple people on the tram at the same time it feels like they're very isolated to themselves and like nothing else is happening you you sort of forget about the fact that that Eva took the tram for a mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. until that final moment when you see the, the police car drive by <laughs> um mm -hmm. and and you're thinking oh oh yeah that that happened that was uh, that was a, ma a major part of the story but this this drama this drama that exists takes over and kind of makes you forget about that for a minute, which is good. I think it was good for the film. Hmm. Um, and then are, are you guys still uh, screening it at different festivals now? It's it's uh, been in, in many festivals. I think it right now this weekend, it's in Italy. It's uh, I, I don't have the um, I don't, you know, have the schedule now, hmm. but it's it. Remember, it was made in in um, December 2019 came out uh, to 2020, but then you had the pandemic, and right. there was not not much. Uh, there were there were not many places uh, uh, festivals, and and then it 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 kind of got momentum. Uh, we yeah. went to to New York, and and yeah, it's just uh, traveling. And now it's in uh, it's uh, the the ride just continues. Yeah. Um, and what's that like sitting, I, I imagine you, you, you traveled to some of the showings. Um, what's it like sitting with others and watching your project unfold in front of you? I, I have to say that's, that was because I, I haven't been to many festivals. It was, it was sh uh, shown in Oslo uh, once I was, I was there. And then the next time I saw it was like almost three years after in New York. And that was a beautiful experience. Yeah, no, because because um, for as I was saying, is you know it's a it's it's a half comedy. So mm -hmm. so so being in a in a um, um, theater with with fifty or hundred people, it 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 gives something extra to the experience because not only do I, you know, I, I appreciate that people react to the, to, to the film, but it's also good for the people watching the film that they yeah. can enjoy it more in, in, uh, you know, in a theater. So, yeah. so, so I was, uh, uh, it's, it's always a bit surrealistic to watch, uh, watch your own uh, material, but I, but I, I really enjoyed that. I, I went to two screenings and I, that was, you know, uh, that was uh, just uh, thrilling to be there. Yeah, I imagine it has to be a combination of uh, scary and rewarding at the same time. It is scary in, in the beginning because you never know how the projector will be, uh, how yeah. the sound will be. So you're like, hmm, and, and, and how's, how's people going to react? Because, yeah. because uh, in some way, like, I, I feel that the, the film... Uh, kind of it it brings you on a journey where most people follow the you know the intention of the film but but in some instances you can show the film and, and people don't get the humor or they don't they don't know that it, it's going to be you know <laughs> what it's going to be and yeah. kind of don't enjoy it as much as as i hoped but but uh, uh in um in oslo and new york it's been very nice it's very been great good, good. Um, and then I'd love for whoever has a chance to watch this interview uh, to to be able to find Night Ride and watch it. Where where could they find Night Ride? Yeah. So so what I was told is that uh, the New York Times are, are going to uh, put it on uh, online. Um, okay. 
I don't have the dates for it. Uh, uh, if maybe you, if you ask um, uh, my publicist, she she will have she will know more about that than, than I do. Okay. Uh, and then you can just put it, uh, you know, so 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 people can can see it or if there's a link or something. For sure. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, and then uh, what are what are the things are you working on right now? Us. So I'm I'm working on on uh, you know very many ideas. I have to say I'm not very disciplined in that. But 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 I'm what I'm I I I have to do is uh, I'm now in uh, post production of with two short films which I really yeah. enjoy. Um, uh, I have to mention the one that the last one I shot now in just in in August because I really enjoy the uh, the premise of the film is about uh, a couple. A, bit, a little bit this this functional couple that uh, they drive off the road well that's what we see that they're just they've just driven off the road and and uh, uh, somebody comes and, and helps them you know tows their their car uh, mm-hmm. and without them knowing uh, their car is towed to a nudist camping and okay. this is very much very much um, um, you know, not their comfort zone being in the news <laughs> company, which which you know mo- most people will, could could re- um, relate to, um, sure. and 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 it, this just this just uh, exposes all all their uh, issues, and it, it just comes comes more and more to light uh, during the film, and it's it's quite quite, I think I hope it's going to be really funny and really uh, quite crazy, so yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I look forward. I look forward to it. I hope I get a chance to see it. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Thank, thank you so much. And I ask, so I ask everybody this question. It's kind of more for me than it is for anybody else because I'm curious to see the reactions and the answers. Uh, what are some of your favorite films? Wow, I have many of them. Um, today, I've been thinking a lot about. Uh, what is it called if, um, in? Uh, flew over cuckoo's nest with um, one, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to say, I, I was thinking a lot about that today. Um, uh, and I, I, I also, uh, I, I loved Fargo when it came. You know, the first original okay. uh, Fargo, and I love quite a few of of the Coen Brothers films. Uh, I enjoyed Mulholland Drive, uh, David Lynch, um, mm-hmm. but also, also I have, you know, I can, I have to say that that there are uh, a couple of films that are, you know, more not so much, not not so stylistic, that that have moved me. Um, Mummy, uh, Xavier Dolan, which is, you know very strong strong film the the okay. um, p- the piano teacher uh, Mikhail Haneke which is also a very very strong uh, film you know both both those films when i saw them you know had a huge in- impact on me so mm-hmm. so it's 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 both both the you know s- social realistic films and more the you know uh, um, films that uh, are in in a stylistic, I guess Fargo is kind of a stylistic film. What would you call Fargo? Yeah. What, what, where, where would you put it? Uh, um, God, I don't even, I don't, I don't know. I've, 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 I've only seen it once, and it was, it was maybe a year and a half ago. It was the first time I watched it. God, I don't. It was just such a wild ride. I don't know how you. I don't know if you can just put it in one category. Because, because you, you you never know what's going to happen next, but it's so brilliantly put together. Because there's obviously a, one direction they're taking you, mm-hmm. and it all makes sense when you get there. But it's just such a wild ride. I don't know. I don't know if you can just put that in one one place. No, it's, it, and originally they 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 wanted to make a kind of a realistic documentary style film out of it, yeah. but it. 
but it turned out pretty stylistic in the way I, I see it, you know, with, with their dialogue, of course, and with, with, with some of the, but it, it, uh, I really enjoyed that when it came. Yeah. Uh, I have to say that was, uh, also because it reminds me a bit of Norway, you know, with a Minnesota nice, do you call it, you know, the, the, the Shargon yeah. there it's, yeah. uh, with Jerry Lundegaard. Lundegaard is a is a Scandinavian name, and uh, yeah, I felt like a, a bit awkward really uh, at home watching that film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I imagine there was you can make a lot of comparisons with that, uh, mm -hmm. at, at the very least with the setting and things like that. Um, yeah. I I have to go back and watch it again because now 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 I I need to categorize it. I think so. Mm -hmm. I I have to go back and watch it. I have it on I have it on DVD, so I'll I'll pull it out and and watch that soon yeah for for phil i also uh, teach uh, film students and i use that a lot because it you know it, there's a lot of um uh things to learn from watching that film um about yeah. filmmaking actually oh for sure for sure it's i don't know why i had avoided it for so long i don't know if i avoided it but i just never i had never gotten around to seeing it and like i said i i probably watched it a, a, year, a year and a half ago Maybe ah. for the first time. So you saw the TV series before you saw the original. I actually have not seen the TV series. Oh no! Okay. Well, I, no. I haven't either. I it didn't really appeal so much to me as as a yeah. film. Yeah. But I, I maybe it was the fact that there was a television series. The fact that they needed to, they felt the need to make one. Uh, mm. may, maybe I just maybe I thought it was time to watch the movie if they thought it was that good. Yeah. Well, it it depends. You know. So, so what would you what would be your favorite Coen Brothers film then? Um, believe it or not, I think that's actually the only Coen Brothers film that I've seen. I'm just the worst. Oh, There's, really? I so I didn't really start watching film until maybe the last decade. Oh, okay. Um, so I have a lot of catching up to do. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have seen Fargo. Um, but no, I think off the top of my head, I think that may be the only Coen Brothers film that I've actually seen but but you've seen big lebowski i have not oh really that that's gonna be a ride that's that's a that's a funny th film yeah i've heard great things about it but i have not seen it so 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 what is what is your uh top uh three or uh, because i i have something to learn because i'm i'm a bit you know an oldie uh <laughs> <laughs> um so i always I always say the same film is my favorite. I always say Empire Strikes Back is huh. my favorite film. Um, yeah. and, and because it's sentimental to me, I've, I've said this, I, I feel like I'm, I tell the story all the time. Um, my dad worked a lot. I didn't have tons of time to spend with him. So when he, um, when they re-released the original Star Wars films in theaters, he made it a point to take me to see the, the midnight showings. Um, and it was just, it was just an experience for him to have time late at night because he usually worked nights to uh to actually have the time to spend with me and to take me to see these films they just resonated with me and i know that that's mm -hmm. that's part of the reason that i like the, the film so much um but well, recently it, no, thematically it's about uh father son also so yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and then i love the marvel movies um and then so I always go back. So Letterboxd is a, I'm not sure. Yeah. So they, they have you pick your top four and mm -hmm. currently on there is a film called Palm Springs, um, mm -hmm. which is, uh, it's about a time loop starring Andy Samberg. And oh. it's, it's, it's funny because he's funny. So he, you know, he's himself, but he gets to be much more dramatic and emotional than he usually is. And he does it very well. Mm -hmm. um, there's a film called uh, one of the good ones. Uh, which is an indie film that was filmed out in California. Um, it's just, it's about this 20 something uh, gentleman that's in rehab and he meets a girl and he basically throws everything away to try and be with her. And they're just oh. not, they're not in the same place in their lives. And that creates a lot of conflict. That sounds uh, good. Yeah, that sounds yeah. like a nice, uh, nice story. It's mm -hmm. very good. Um, and then there's there's been some good films this year that I really enjoyed. Uh, Don't Worry Darling was fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, Clerks 3 was fantastic because it took that franchise in a very different direction. Um, mm -hmm. 
trying to think. Uh, one of the the feature films I, I just covered, Scream Fest, which is a horror film festival out in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the film that ended up winning uh, best best feature film and best director was called Eight Found Dead. And oh. they so you get the beginning of the story and you get the end of the story and it sort of folds in on itself and you, you sort of meet in the middle at the end. Um, and it's, it's very like, you, you know what happens, mm. but y- you, you want to figure out how they got there. Mm. Mm. It's very, very well done. And wow. if I, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get a copy of that at some mm. point. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a lot. I, I can't pick just one film. I know I always, I always say star Wars, but, uh, I know there's there's so many other films that I love almost as much. So well, you sounds like you love you know uh, a variety of of uh, different genres as well. For sure, for sure. Um, I was never a comic book superhero guy until the last ten or fifteen years. I was never um, I was never a horror guy until just very recently. Not until COVID hit, and I had a lot of time to sit down and just explore new movies that's when I got into horror films. Mm. Um, and I mean, I guess silver lining for the pandemic. I, I had a chance to explore new films. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. But uh, Eric, I want to thank you again for taking the time to sit down with me. Uh, I'm sure you have other things to do. And uh, again, it, it, I very much appreciated that you take the time out to sit with me and, and talk about your film, which again, uh, for those of you watching, Night Ride was a fantastic uh, comedic drama uh that i encourage you I, I will post the link when it's available for you guys to check it out i encourage you to do so great thanks a lot you're very welcome thank you so much and have a great day you too thank you thanks cheers See ya.